Hello from the Music Interview Corner. We're here in Helsinki with Insomnium again, with Nilo and Wille again. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. So nice to see you again. Yes, it's nice to see you again. <laughs> Last time we had so much fun. I expect as much fun today as well. For sure, yes. Good. So you are about to release a brand new EP. It's called Songs of the Dusk. Can you tell us more about that? Well, it continues the same story. So we started with Anno 1696 and... These three songs are kind of extra director's cut material from that session because we realized in the studio that we have 11 songs and something like 75, 76 minutes of music and it would have been too much for for one album. So that's why we decided to leave these three tracks for, for EP. And do you have a favorite song? So which one of the songs of the dusk is your favorite? Well... <laughs> I mean, like I, I like them all. I, I, yeah, the, the the one one thing is that they're not like we don't consider them as a leftover material or anything like that. Um, the length was just quite quite long, and, and I think we were kind of like throwing out ideas: should we do like double vinyl or something like that and release everything at one go? But then we ended up like maybe maybe EP is the way to go, and and. I think I like them both, uh, all, song, all three songs, So, and they're both EP and, 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 and the actual album. I think they stand alone very well, but then can be listened um, one after another. So I can't really name, I think it's a nice entity, the whole, whole three songs. Good, and do you have a favorite song? Well, they're all equally good, of course. And like Willa said, we don't think that these three songs are somehow inferior or leftovers or just bonus tracks and i think this kind of we wanted to elevate their status as well so they they deserve some attention and like when they get their own release as an ep it kind of shows that okay we we think that they, these are where these songs and these are all pretty good songs so that's what i think yeah it, it's amazing the first song is already out on september 1st you released uh, Funnily called Song of the Dusk, not songs, Song of the Dusk, and it has a beautiful music video. Can you tell us more about the music video, where it was shot and who had the idea? Who wants to start? Well, <laughs> we, we use the same theme, so it's a Rivata, Rivata video again. And, 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 and unsurprisingly, it was like the band shots were shot in, in Kotka, where we had the rehearsal room, and, and actually in the same space where we shot some of the inside photos for the um, inside um, shoots for the other videos as well and, and and then of course they did their magic and went went up north to uh fill in the video with nice landscapes and and, and i can't remember exactly where which all places they went went to collect the material but they turned into a really nice nice story and and, and got the footage for that and you know the video looks quite cold autumnal yeah. it was shot in, in like in the middle of summer it was really warm and, and summery feel, so when we were shooting those, uh, playing playing shots, it, it was quite different feel. But yeah, I, I think it's an excellent video, and, and especially it's quite quite challenging to make a music video for longer songs, mm -hmm. because how do you kind of keep people interested, in, and, and, and how do you build the story? So I think it kind of unfolds really nicely, and, and they did a really, really good job with that. Yeah, it's almost like a little short film because it's almost 10 minutes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I think most of this epic landscape scenery was shot in Norway. Yeah. So cool. really, really up north. So it's really cool, cool footage. And uh, I also agree that it al almost looks like a short film or something. It's mm -hmm. such a cool. And I think my favorite part is when the, the guy throws his cross into the water and then oh, it yeah. turns to, into this priest fellow. And that's a nice effect. It's probably the most dramatic part of the video. I yeah, and it's surprised me when I first watched it. So it's, it, I think it's a cool thing. Yeah, and uh, in three days, on October 28th, you're going to perform in Mikkeli, at Black Box Mikkeli, which is the festival of Blood Red Hourglass. How does it feel? Well, it's like we, we haven't, um, I haven't done lots of Finnish gigs after the release. So we only did the few Helsinki ones. So... So it's nice to, we're not neglecting Finnish mm -hmm. fans or, or Finland, but it has been difficult to schedule in everything. So it's nice to go and play in Mikkeli. We haven't played 
too many times in Mikkeli, but uh, I think this is probably going to be the most successful Mikkeli gig ever, I would say, already. And then there's going to be more Finnish shows to follow next year as well, so we will hopefully announce them very soon. So keep eye on those as well. Cool. Yeah, stay tuned, guys. Yeah, it's going to be an epic Mikkeli show for sure. And uh, I think we haven't played in Mikkeli 10 years or 15 years oh. so for for a very long time. So it's going to be cool. We haven't forgot to Mikkeli. <laughs> yeah. I remember like the first gig was the Veturitallit yeah. gig. So it was like outside gig, like near like train, mm-hmm. train sort of carriage. And then there was like just like sand on the floors. And then we played on like very shaky stage. And then, and then I think there was no one watching. Maybe my two friends or something. <laughs> so, so that was, yeah, you know, you can, it's quite easy to top that. Yeah, the bar's not very high. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The, and another one was we were late in, in some kind of a nightclub. Yeah. You know, had this kind of, uh, catwalk. catwalk. Oh. It was really funny. <laughs> did you use it while singing? I think I didn't because we didn't yet have the wireless thing. It would have been too long <laughs> to walk there, but we, we yeah. talked about it. Should we try it? Yeah. It was a funny, funny place. And you will also be on a big European tour now in November and December. Did you plan it intentionally like that so that you could get away from the Finnish winter? No, but l- luckily these European tours often happen in November. And of course, it's a, if you have to pick a month when you want to be out from Finland, that November is the one. So yeah. I'm not complaining about that. Yeah, it's just like that's a kind of normal Uh, touring time and schedule so i mean like i'm not sure if it's gonna be that much better in 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 rainy manchester or in in sort of rainy poland but at least you get rain instead of snow yeah exactly maybe it's a bit warmer but yeah yeah Yeah, we have one or two days in spain and italy so that might be a little bit better i hope you get a lot of sunshine then yeah i hope so one of my favorite topics since our first interview your book And now, a few days ago, I saw you posted on Instagram a very mysterious and interesting post, like a part of the book's cover, and you wrote, all shall be revealed in a while. Would now be a good time to reveal it in my interview? Yeah, I think, when is this interview coming out? Depends, you can decide. Depends, aha. Well, very shortly, all will be revealed, and my book is, well, it's almost almost ready, and it will be released in February next year. Oh. So the cover and the title and all that stuff will be soon released to the to the audience. So cool. it's almost done. Can you tell the title already or is it still secret? It's still a secret, yes. Okay. But February, guys. So, you know, can they already pre-order? Is there a pre-order link? Soon. Okay. If the pre-order link comes out, we put it in the description of the video. So you guys can order it or pre-order it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Wille, I saw also on your band's Instagram a video where you were explaining your role in the band. I mean, we discussed it in February in our last interview, but you explained in this video that you are a professor for microbiology at the University of Helsinki. And I wanted to ask you, since the release of this video, how many new students have you gained? I mean, students with Insomnium band t-shirts. Uh, well, I'm like, I'm still like building up the lab. So, so I have a few, few students now kind of like five five people working in the lab in the next few months so so it's getting there it's kind of just moving moving and 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 then kind of starting over again in a different country basically i used to be in the uk before oh yeah i know you yeah, said that, yeah. but kind of moving here and then you kind of need to start again from a scratch a bit uh so so i haven't seen any any sort of insomnium search in the campus there was few in, in the uk for sure uh but but yeah maybe we're not kind of famous enough or or biologists don't like insomnium so who knows maybe next year in february they will sit with insomnium t-shirts and nilo's book yeah maybe maybe, yeah they can try to kind of like maybe they wear the shirt they can get better mark or something so yeah yeah, who knows yeah yeah i wish i would have (laughs) i wish i would have had professors like you back then yeah well there was a funny i remember like it was like when i started in new york quite quite a few years ago There's a big mass lecture for the first year students, uh, like 300, some evolution and genetics. And then there was a one guy who was really like 
into the lecture and I'm wearing in, and then I can realize that he's wearing insomnia. So just like, okay, I'll go. He's not really interested in like, he's just like some crazy fan. And then he was actually, no, not crazy, but like history student or something and wasn't really interested in biology or even enrolled on that module, but just like want to come and say hi and then get an autograph. So these things happen, but then it's cool. It's, it's nice. And I know we discussed that at Tuska last year, like what's the craziest thing you've ever done on tour? But Wille was not with us when we discussed it. And I wanted to ask you, back then, now you're not touring that much anymore, but back then when you were less professoring and more touring, yeah, what yeah. was the craziest thing you two did together on tour? <sighs> craziest thing we did together? I don't know. I mean, like... Don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Is it censored now? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Like I don't know if we done like anything like too crazy. I, I would say like we're not too crazy band. You know, in a way like well, yes, we like to drink and then have some alcohol and, and then you do like silly things, but nothing really. I I, I think stupid. Um, you also have to keep in mind that your students will be watching, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, but like but, but we've been quite we've, we've kind of like nice, good boys most of the time. So so we we might do some stupid and silly things, but I think it has been yeah. Yeah, quite quite relaxed, I would say. Yeah. Okay. Is there any? Yeah, compared to some some other bands, for sure. Anything you didn't tell me that you wanted to? Tell <laughs> well, most of these accidents have happened to our drummer. Accidents. <laughs> yeah, but but uh. Solo, solo accidents. Solo. solo accidents. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's not here, so you can speak freely. Yeah. Well, I don't know. A couple of times he has been falling down the stairs, for example, <laughs> and hurt his head and stuff okay. like that. But uh, I think that's maybe the most kind of dramatic thing that has happened ever. That, uh, and he survived. He survived, and in our hometown in Joensu, in in Kerubi Bar, they they have this helmet that they bring for him each time we go there oh because they remember this stair crash <laughs> that that he had there once. So he's a famous figure. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah but, I mean, like we had the kind of one rehearsal when we were just like drinking this. We had a show in Russian, and, and, and then we brought some. Russian vodka with us, and then we were rehearsing this old rehearsal praise, and then and making it kind of salmiaki, self-made, and, and then we had too much drink, and we were just like fighting, like not fighting, but like wrestling, and I was all good fun, but then I kind of hit my head, and we had to call ambulance, and I got like, yeah. Do you have a scar from it? Well, probably, probably, because they, I, I didn't get any stitches or anything, but I got like concussion or something, because no. I started vomiting, and then... That was gonna drink was called like black vomit because I was just like, yeah. yeah. But that was like ages ago when we were like 20 years ago, oh, yeah. Yeah. 20 years ago and then, you know, you didn't, yeah. But it was like, yeah, you know, it could have gone worse, but it was just like in the in the back of the day. Now, now it's just kind of funny. Like people do these sort of silly things when they're young and, and, and you know, sometimes you go a bit overboard with alcohol and, and it's not, it's not great, but yeah. But, but these sort of things, it's kind of small accidents and, and silly things. Yeah, that, that wasn't even any kind of fight. It was this brotherly wrestling that we, back in those days, we did a lot of that, that we started wrestling when we were like drunk. Play fighting. Yes. And then, of course, some ha happened and people got hurt a little bit. Like in kindergarten, it's fun until someone cries. Yeah, exactly. It was like that. It was kindergarten. And do you want to say anything to your fans before we end this interview? Well, we have more Finnish shows coming next year. They will be released soon, so stay tuned. Yeah. Stay away from Russian vodka. It's not good for you. It's not worth it. <laughs> thank you. Valuable advice. Yeah, thank you so much, Nilo and Vilent. Goodbye from the Music Interview Corner. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you.